going to be a foul underneath. In talking with the Mary State Racers coaching staff, they feel that the first five minutes of this basketball game will determine its outcome. They feel if they can survive Duke's initial knockout blow, they'll be in good shape and in a competitive position to maybe steal a win. Harrell coming to the top. Langdon driving the baseline. Harrell running it down. Great denial of that interior by Murray State. Townsend fouled by McLeod. And I think you see the explosiveness in the racer's style of play. Mark Godfrey said to me yesterday, he said, George, Chad Townsend's going to remind you of the point guard you had at USC, Robert Pack. He's certainly powerfully built like Robert Pack, and he has the same explosiveness. From Kerrville, Texas, came over from St. Edwards University, found really in a junior college basketball camp where players are trying to make a name for themselves by Tevester Anderson, former assistant to Hugh Durham for so many years at Georgia and now on the staff with Mark Godfrey. Harris trying to keep it alive. Out of bounds to do. What's interesting, Duke has already recorded two blocked shots. And for an undersized team, that's a major achievement. Plenty of action, but neither team able to scratch here in the opening moments. McLeod picked up that left foot and turned it over. Steps on Rashawn, junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, St. Anthony's High School. Chesky up working the officials right in front of his bench, protesting that walking call. The Terry Mays. A soft floater and a tough shot beyond the baseline. 2-0 Murray State. Kato blows past Rayner. We have a, a large Duke crowd on hand, but those that are not uh, Duke fans, and of course this is North Carolina country, the Charlotte, North Carolina area, all pulling for Murray State. People staying with it. Rejected by Mays. Townsend stepped out of bounds. Penetration move and the block shot on Jeff Capel. Arnold Hamilton and uh, Terry Mays both active, both quality shot blockers. Hamilton had 26 to lead the team through this season. And Mays reaching in will pick up that foul. Mark Gottfried with that proverbial whodunit look. As he listens to Eric Harmon, Ted Hillary, and Phil Robinson, the officials for tonight's game. Coming into the season, Murray State was picked as the finish as low as seventh in the conference. Ohio Valley Conference, a strong lead. Austin T, of course, Dave Luce, an outstanding job with that team. Very short this year. Duke struggling from the perimeter early, and that's a Good news for Murray State. Capel 0 for 4 out of the gates. Most Murray State fans thought at the start of this season that it was going to be a rebuilding year. Well, they had their best team perhaps last season, a controversial call at the end of the OVC tournament against the same Austin P team they beat this year. Allowed the governors a chance to get in. Rainey can't hit. Parallel on the floor, giving it up to Wojo. A little beyond his range, maybe. <laughs> he fought around before he decided to let it go. He wasn't going to shoot until you said it was beyond his range. A little hesitation, but he still managed to knock it down. Landon off the dribble. 
Out of bounds to Murray State. This is the kind of pace we anticipated, but both teams so quick, their hands making it so difficult to get an easy look. We said the first five minutes for Murray State, very important right now, their defense allowing them to hang with Duke. UT. That's a three. Count it. And a foul underneath against Capel. But D.T. Mays has the green light to turn it loose anytime he wants to. George, that's the same play, the same curl move he used off an inbounds pass with 18 seconds left in the OBC tournament to send that game with Austin B. into overtime. Here it is again. Off the back down this time. Rainey working with it. And he draws the foul from Landon. Trajan now with two. Alex is a little upset about it. Well, he'll have to go to Ricky Price. Price has been in and out of the lineup. Krasinski went small. Thus far as we approach the five-minute mark, Mary State has things in their favor. Paper is not scoring. Langdon has picked up two fouls. Yeah, and that's very important because Langdon is perhaps the uh, most devastating of shooters if he gets hot. But right now, it's Mays' moment. He has five. All seven of Murray State's points belonging to the Terry Mays. And they lead by four. Murray State can afford to apply supreme pressure on the ball out on the perimeter because of Duke's lack of an interior offensive game. Capel. Count it and a foul. And Mark Godfrey not too happy about that particular official's interpretation. And I can see why. Townsend getting his first. Eamon Domzalski will check into the game. Coach K, Gwen Snyder, and Tommy Amaker, all a part of that staff, told us yesterday that Domzalski had an excellent week of practice. And number 13, Domzalski now checking into the game for Carowell. Really is important for Duke at some point in time in this tournament to establish any kind of inside presence not only for tonight's game, but down the road to the Final Four. But will it be a short one? We'll find out. Compete in the game, who knows yet, but I know our players feel like they can. And, uh, you know, they have to guard us too, and we have to guard them. But at least from a matchup perspective on paper, uh, it's a lot different than playing a team that's, that's strength is in the middle. Coach Gottfried being perhaps politically correct, Vincent Rainey and to Terry Mays and others telling the press yesterday that uh, they thought not only did they match up well, but that they're older and better. And they went home to eat some pizza last night. Coach Gottfried told us our players believe that they can win. And uh, no coach would want anything else, right? Absolutely. Bryce on the floor since Langdon got saddled with the early fouls. Chappelle stripped and fouled. Early on, a quick whistle. Any reach in being called in tonight's game. That one against Darren Dawson, number four, the sophomore from LaGrange, Kentucky. Look at that. Rest of the team, an offer, but DT finding the range to Terry Mays. You have to be impressed with the fact that the Murray State racers do not fear Duke, but reminds me of when I was much younger, my grandmother said, don't mess with the dog next door. And I told her, Grandma, I'm not afraid of that dog, but you know what? One day the dog bit me. <laughs> Does your dog bite? Yes. Well, Murray State trying to make sure that it's not my dog. And they've done that. You mentioned they needed to stay with it for the first five minutes. They've done that. They passed test number one. Gonzalski got a piece of that one. 
Wojciechowski now looks to push. Chappelle. Pulled down by Rainey. This is not a strong offensive team that Duke has on the floor right now. Well, you think with Langdon and Capel out of the game that this would be an opportunity for Murray State to get themselves a lead. Arnell Hamilton up high. A push-off against Rainey. McLeod getting the job done. Blocking up. Nice penetration move and the shot fake. So many times I question why players try to avoid being fouled. I thought the object of offense was to get fouled. Well, you've seen we've had three block shots between the two teams. George, we've had a lot of deflections. There's another one. Townsend. Nice move. The trailer is Mays. Too strong. Rainey comes up with it. You don't think that was a lob pass, do you? No, I don't think so. Yet another deflection. This one from Wojciechowski. And another reach-in foul. This will be a very difficult game for the officiating crew to work with the pace of it being so frenetic. Well, Joe reaching in and he slapped across the wrist as he continued to play his aggressive defense. Well, Joe's an extension of the coaching staff. He sees the game through the same set of eyes as the Duke coaching staff. Dawson will trigger it in. So far, it's been maze or bust for Murray State offensively. Well, in the last game, we saw Providence get 50 points in the first half. I don't think we're going to have to worry about either one of these teams getting 50 points. Ramzowski on the floor with Chappelle Price. And Rashawn McLeod. Mike Krzyzewski has to feel good with Langdon and Capel out of there that Murray State has been stymied offensively. Wojciechowski. Gomzowski trying to keep it alive. McLeod, the iron unkind to Duke Early, but he does draw the contact from Hamilton, his second. Shooting under duress will lead to bad stats, and that's really what we've seen. Every shot contested. So much has been made about Mary State's ability to score points, and not enough has been said about its ability to prevent points. Wojciechowski and Chappelle Lee with Langdon and Capel back on the floor. And all of a sudden, Duke's going big. Gomzowski on the floor gives them some brawn if not the height of Greg Newton, who really slumped when you think about it. Uh, Greg Newton was a strong impact player at one time in this season. Aaron Page is coming to the game, the freshman from Austin, Texas, number 24. Mark Gottfried's team. I believe he had a lane violation. Against Price. It'll go the other way. Well, we've been stuck on seven for a while. Duke gets one and makes it 8-7. For a couple of minutes, we were locked in a touchdown and an extra point for each. But now it's an 8-7 Duke lead. What the jagged pace of this game has done, it's taken the, the Duke crowd out of the game. So thus far, Duke has no home court advantage. Townsend gets Carowell airborne. Gomzowski deflected that one. Now Rainey the loose ball in our area. That may be what that young man needed because he's really the guy that can get it done in a variety of ways offensively. Vincent Rainey for Murray State. Carowell in 
traffic. Oh, how did he get that through the hoop? Chris Carrawell, the freshman from Cardinal Ritter in St. Louis. As Rainey goes reversal on the other end, drawing contact. Nice baseline penetration by Carrawell. He regroups himself, gets himself under control, and makes the nice backboard layup. Carrawell picking up that foul on the other end. Shot clock problem apparently being dealt with. Bill Robinson coming over to tell Coach K about it. Mark Gottfried already made aware of the difficulty. Blue Devils have gone to the bench a bit more than Murray State. That's no surprise. Far more depth for the Devils than the 15th seeded racers from the OVC. At the start of this season, Coach K made the decision that Duke was going to return to its pressure defense and motion offense. Rainey now using the glass, beginning to feel it. You can see the confidence in his eyes. Murray State by a deuce. Carrowell left wide open. Gomzowski stripped. It belongs to Murray State. Those quick hands for the racers. Defense dominant in an up and down style of game. Like a run. Good spacing. Put another defensive rebound off the Sanders miss. One shot and out for the Cardinals. Kettner wants the ball down on the blocks. That pass tipped away. Travieso gets lucky it came right back to him. About to go under 12 minutes to go here first half. Here's Kettner spinning for the turnaround. Can't get it down. Weeks, no. Weeks, yes. And he'll get to the line. The physical play by UMass. When Kettner catches the basketball, he draws attention. That allows Weeks to slide inside for position. You have to continue to block out. Weed helps down low, but there's Johnson swinging at the basketball. Forgets to block out Weeks. Weeks, couple efforts. Now he finishes. Bruce of Flint liking the play of his guys inside. Big and strong inside with senior leadership of the guard position. Makes for a pretty deadly combination. Weeks able to knock down the free throw, and eight minutes gone here in the first half. And UMass has doubled up Louisville at 18 9. Juwan Weed has yet to score. Bozak Smith's in the game for the first time. Louisville not getting anything out of their backcourt to this point. Travieso, one of the top defenders also, has matched up with Wheat. And Travieso so good, good because of the quick hands and the quick feet. Wheat, Sims, and Flynn all scoreless. Nine minutes into the game, but Nate Johnson is keeping the Cardinals. UPS can the three. Peter Sowers with his first field goal. Five on the night for the sophomore. His father, Mark, is the president of the St. Louis Blues. Former executive with the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cardinals. Switch to Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. While she waits for the Supreme Court to decide. Oh, he saw Knight coming back in a ball game. Hesed comes in, but he replaces Moore, not Brewer. Yes, so Corey's still in there. He'll handle it on the inbound from Nate Erdman. Erdman with five, Brewer with nine so far. Distance for Jim Herrick in 95 when they claimed the national title. Both left, Romar to Pepperdine, where Herrick had once coached. And Mark Godfrey says all of his success as a coach he owes to Herrick. He taught him to teach what you know, know what you teach. And that's the UCLA high-low post using guards as the catalyst. And Townsend this time off the dribble gives Murray State a four-point lead. Duke's only lead thus far in the game was when Duke was ahead 3-2 with 16 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the game. And they only held that lead for 25 seconds. Since then, Duke has scored six points. Off the tie ball, the arrow belonging to the Blue Devils, and Capel will trigger it in. Aaron Page is on the floor for the Racers. 
with Mays, Harris, Townsend, and Rainey. Capel with the dump down. Carwell working on Harris. Nice move. He's had some shoulder problems, but has come through it well and has really been an added force in the second half of the season for the Blue Devils. And the guard story that we mentioned, the three O's for both, due in large part to any success that either team has had. And that includes early on tonight. With Trajan Langan out of the game with two personal fouls, Duke is starting to try to build an interior offense since they cannot go to their initial weapon, the three-point shot. Page went over the back, wave off that deuce. That's the kind of foul that Mark Gottfried can live with. Fouls of aggression. Quickly up to tell Aaron not to worry about it. Put those hands together. Duke's two principal weapons are the three-point shot and aggressive defense, and there's been a noticeable absence of the three-point shot in the first half of this game. Roshan McLeod at the line. In talking with Mike Krzyzewski yesterday, we both learned that with the guard change came obviously success. But at this stage of the season, you're worried about successful but tired smaller players. And I think as they move along in the tournament, the Blue Devils have to build some sort of interior offense for the eventuality when they meet big, strong teams. Page looking to Rainey. What a nice move. And reversal. Oh, Vincent special. He's all smiles after that one. And he's a young man that, according to the OBC scouting reports, loves to go one-on-one. -on -one. High lob, too strong for McLeod. Well defensed by Murray State. Fifth turnover recorded by the Blue Devils. Not quite to the 10-minute mark here in the opening half. 15th seeded Murray State against second seeded Duke already today. One number two seed knocked off. Hoppin State got it done against South Carolina. And uh, here today, uh, three seed. Georgia knocked off by Tennessee Chattanooga. May. Yet another push against Harris. It will go the other way. Duke has tried to alter their defense a little bit with a full court pressure, and here they come with the trap. Murray State does a nice job of reversing the ball into the middle of the floor. Textbook zone press at top. Authored by that young man, mature beyond his years as a head coach, Mark Godfrey. It's a great relief to a coach when you Executed the way it was drawn up on the on the blackboard. 31 years of age, the young man from Alabama. Comes from a strong family in sports. His dad, Joe, a former basketball coach, now the athletic director at South Alabama. He hired Phil Musselman, and you know that story. Oh so close against Arizona last night. And his uncle, Mike Godfrey, former head football coach at Pitt. And now a television commentator in football. Townsend trying to post up, gets the foul. Chad Townsend is the key to their offense. When he gets in an offensive flow and they're getting the ball to him, then the racers are operating at full force. Now you talked about getting big. They just got bigger to do. Greg, Greg Newton has just come in and Trajan Langdon back in the game. Coach K taking a little bit of a gamble with Langdon possessing two personal fouls. He sees some bricks at the free throw line. Murray State 0 for 3. 
offensive foul against Newton. Coach K giving a long look to the officials. Sometimes you can communicate with body language. Now a little verbiage. Through the years, the tenacity that comes with the competitive nature of Coach K has evolved into a psychology and a kinder, gentler Coach K with success, and he's had plenty of it. He's a great communicator. And we begin talking about the entire package in coaching. He has the blueprint for success. And the ACC has the blueprint for outstanding basketball coaches. He's down the road. We'll be trying to make some serious history tomorrow. Dean Smith looking to pass the Baron, Adolph Ruck, with a victory against Colorado. Murray State showing a little one-two-two in half court play, rotating into a man-to-man. Langdon, too short. Mays cheats. They didn't find him. Townsend did not find him in time. Newton with a big play. Paper on the other end. That should pick up Brett Newton's confidence. Poor decision by Chad Townsend. He had a man wide open on the left wing, and he decided to go one-on-one. -on -one. He has to become a little less selfish. Brady by Nate James. Boy, what an explosive first step he has. Minnesota had in its way early against Southwest Texas in the opening round. Loser Flint's club up with uh, Louisville early. What a turnaround for UMass this year. Newton. A push inside against Matt Harris. A couple of quick fouls against him. And a nice penetration move. And a fine block by Greg Newton. But what's more impressive is the Nice outlet pass. He put it up high and allowed Jeff Capel to run under it, not having to break stride, and it carried him right on into the basket for the easy layup. Court awareness for Newton, giving him some confidence as Capel and Langdon take a seat. Page stars for that rebound. Murray State going back to its bench. Dennis Dahl, DJ as they call him, double zero in the game. Newton checking him at the top of the circle. Knocked away by Nate James. Youngster has a tremendous future, as does that man, the coach of Murray State. Many times on the road to the Final Four, individual players will take a peculiar path, such as the case of Chad Townsend, recruited as a baseball player at Tiny Set Edwards University, didn't work out, opted then to join the Air Force, performed in Desert Storm for a couple of years, during that time married, had a couple of children, then was found at a City League tryout in Dallas by Sylvester Anderson, and recruited to become a college basketball player. And now at 25 years of age, he hopes to lead his trio of guards past three of the more celebrated All-Americas out of high school that have managed their way to Durham to play for Duke. A stirring story of perseverance. Dennis Dahl picking up that foul. And uh, you see the guard story. The productivity not there from Duke. Really, Murray State having to work hard to get theirs, and in many cases, Townsend not playing his best. Uh, the Duke guards are three for 10 from the field. The Murray State guards are eight for 19 from the field. Carroll at the line. Just as we mentioned Townsend, he checks back in and Page sits down. 
I can tell you one thing, if he served in Desert Storm, he's not going to be faced by the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> we talked of no fear. That's an example as to why. Some battles uh, a little larger than those waged on the road to the Final Four. It's a heck of a lot tougher to go one-on-one -on -one in the Desert Storm than it is here in Charlotte. Rainey, isolated against Carowell. Well, that is just beautiful. A nice spin move in the lane. He has 10. The answer will do. Chappelle using the glass. Well, he has been outstanding in his freshman year. Southfield, Michigan. Impressed Coach K very early this season. Townsend again forcing one, George. And the outlet to Price. A pull-up. That's his game. Duke's first lead since it was 3-2 to two at the 1650 mark. And here come their fans. McLeod and Bryce making life miserable for Rainey. Here's a nice power move inside as they fight for the rebound and, and it appeared to go off of Ricky Price. Rainey arguing that point, but you clearly see the overplaying and the kind of face-up defense that Duke can throw at you. And at times, George, it'll come in waves, and that's something Murray State perhaps isn't used to in the Ohio Valley Conference. Don't forget, our tournament coverage continues tomorrow on CBS Sports. Our early games, Colorado in that historic matchup with North Carolina, Kansas, Purdue, Little Nova, and California. All of those times approximate on the road to the Final Four. I anticipate Duke's going to make a major run. They're going to make a major run with transition offense. Murray State's getting their two of their three guards buried down in the baseline, and they're not getting back on defense. But the perimeter problems continue for the Duke guards. Ball can't come down with it. Price does. The Terry Mays, after hitting a couple early, has really fallen on hard times. Wojciechowski answers for three. They're Hits the deck. They're going to do it with transition offense. hasn't scored in the last 10 minutes. Now he turns it over. Outlet pass saved by Carrell to McLeod. Chappelle for three. Long rebounds taken in by the Duke guards. That one by Price. Chappelle over Dawson. And again a tip out. the Duke fans applaud the effort on the offensive boards. Murray State makes a quick defensive adjustment as they slip into a 2-3 zone. Lee Wojciechowski held the ball as he got his team into an appropriate zone offense. McLeod has six. Largest lead for the Blue Devils. I get the feeling Mark Godfrey's concerned about fatigue right now. Oh, well, should be... Uh, if you look at the Murray State racers on the floor, they're all up in the erect position. A lot of dribbling by Townsend. He's missed a few open players in the last few minutes. The hardest thing in basketball for a player to learn is when to start his dribble and when to stop his dribble. Mays under duress. Those are tired shots. and saved beautifully by Dawson. Page. Townsend on the glass. Dole. 
Dahl with the hoop and the foul. And that ends a three-minute drought for Murray State as they trail by four with 4.05 to play. In a guard-dominant game, Mark Gottfried's club getting it done early against the Duke guards, but lately it's been Wojo leading the Duke comeback to take his lead. And one of the staples of Duke's transition game is to push the ball quickly up the middle of the floor, spot up on both sides for the three-point shot, and if you catch the defense sinking toward the basket, turn it loose. Again, a problem with the clock, it appears, or who picked up that foul? It was credited to Carowell a moment ago. For those of you that just joined us, here's what's been happening. Murray State struggling from the floor in an up-and-down game. Both defenses with their overplaying styles along the perimeter taking control of the game. Here. Block shots, deflections, we've seen a lot of them. It's, it's been a somewhat of a helter-skelter game, Tim. The problem was the number given on the foul. It was Carowell, as we mentioned. But the official had given 25 earlier. After Dahl's tip there, and he gets the old-fashioned three-point play. And that ends what had become a very anemic four minutes for Murray State. I think you correctly identified a major problem for Murray State right now, and that's fatigue. This is a team that now starting to come out of the defensive stance. They're not getting their legs into the shots. And Langdon gets his first bucket. A three-pointer, 30 to 24. Trajan got two early fouls and really became a non-factor after those early calls against him, forced to sit for seven minutes. What's interesting is that Murray State has not tried to exploit the fact that Trajan Langdon has two fouls. Townsend off the dribble, he has four. 30 to 26. Mark Gottfried will be happy to see the intermission. He'll be happy to get out of here with the uh, leading or only down three or four points. Capel picking up that foul. A timeout, something Mark Gottfried loves having right here. Atlantic Seaboard, a big banking town, and we've been rolling up some big numbers today in the Southeast Regional. Tennessee Chattanooga, a 14 seed, surpassing third seeded Georgia. Illinois getting past USC and Providence, blitzing Marquette of Conference USA, and here we are in game four, second seeded Duke, challenged by Murray State, the 15th seed out of the OVC. With George Rattling, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us here at the Charlotte Coliseum. Shocking second day in this NCAA tournament. Townsend dumping it down to Rainey. Triple teamed, he still managed to get it off. Nate James comes down with it. Look out for Langdon. And the block. Townsend picks up the foul. And as this ball was entered into the post, Vince Rainey must do a better job of reading the defense. Anytime you have three players converging on you, it means that somewhere on the floor, two players are wide open for the opportunity shot. Well, you really sense that Rainey's aware that others are struggling. And so he's rushing shots, feeling that double and triple team coming. 2.45 remaining, and Rainey, 5 of 13 from the floor. Langdon missing at the strike. Duke struggling on the foul line tonight. Well, he's 90% on the year. But as a team, you're right, George, they're 7 of 12, make it 8 of 13. And coming into the game, they were shooting 70% from the foul line as a team. Townsend. Again, an example of his one-on-one -on -one ability. Count it, and the foul. The answer on the glass foul, Arnell Hamilton. Jackson, Alabama, Pensacola Junior College, where he performed before making his way to Murray State. 
many coaches understand that when you have a good offensive player, you must allow him to take some bad shots to make the good shots. Fifteenth seeded Murray State leading much of the way, trailing by two now with two and a half remaining against second seeded Duke. And a matchup of guards. Three for Duke and three for Murray State. So far, the racers getting the better of that matchup. McLeod stripped. He may have hurt his shoulder that time on the contact. Here's Rainey. With that spin move, he turns it over, taking an extra step. Fifth turnover committed by Murray State. Neither team shooting well, but again, George, for those just joining us, defense has a lot to do with it. Absolutely. It's been very difficult for Duke or Murray State to find open looks at the basket, and that's a tribute to the pressure defense both of these teams are applying. Duke's turned it over nine times. Murray State five turnovers in the first half. McLeod really wants it, bodying up on Rainey. Nice move. Eight points for him. Duke's largest lead was six. It is now four with 137 and counting. Nice cut to the hoop, but another challenge shot. And D.T. Mays back into the scoring column. He has nine. Most of his points coming early. His last bucket came four minutes deep into this game. So that ends a long personal drought for him. And that was a play that was taken directly out of John Wooden's playbook. Out of the 2-3 high post offense, a backdoor cut. Capel has seven. 35 to 31. Well, this game has advertised. And again, proving the competitive balance in college basketball. Now a guard-laden game. Dahl, up on He has five. Circle Pines, Minnesota, played at Iowa Central Community College. Yet another J.C. transfer Mark Godfrey has utilized this year. In the passing lane that time to knock it away. Have you ever been to Circle Pine, Mike? <laughs> it's been a while. Mike Krzyzewski, all too aware of what Murray State's been able to get done. There's some offensive board work. And Jeff Capel going inside and taking on the responsibilities of the big man in their absence. Murray State really getting it done on the glass. And again, we talked about quicker to the ball. And uh, matchups tell you that guards can rebound today. And the racers dead even at this stage with the higher-seeded Blue Devils. I can't believe a world traveler like you has never been at in Circle Pine, Missouri. It's a small town. <laughs> Circle Pine is so small that they they don't have a town drunk, Tim. They had to borrow one from a neighboring town. He's going to have to go. Wojo. Ooh, that was ugly. And he's going to hear from the anti-Duke crowd, which has been prominent. I mentioned earlier, Charlotte, uh, really more of a North Carolina city. And those that bought up tickets among the general public, clearly siding with the racers, the underdog. Clock winding down in the half. Shooting for the tie or the lead. Oh, say that this is auto racing country if not basketball country Murray State giving trouble in turn four to Duke courtesy Vincent Rainey this is a shot of desperation we're tied at 35 CBS Sports exclusive coverage of NCAA's basketball championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station 
you've always loved playing. Rent a car. Many of you may remember the song by Jackson Brown, Running on Empty. Well, <laughs> these guards for Murray State and Duke playing on adrenaline and having to get it done, along with George Raveling, Tim Brando. It was the story going in. It remains the story at halftime. Well, the Murray State guards actually are on pace with their regular season productivity. They score 71% of the points for Murray State during the regular season, and that's just where they are right now. There's just been a dis uh, different distribution of points. What's been impressive by this group is the fact that they have 13 of Murray State's 25 rebounds, and they've only committed five turn four turnovers. The good news for them is that uh, Townsend has not played his best operating at the point. And the counterparts from Duke, Every shot has been under duress. Langdon saddled with early foul difficulty. And I'm sure Coach Kay is saying, had that not occurred, Trajan could have made a difference. Murray State's done an excellent job of keeping Duke out of a comfortable offensive rhythm. And they've had few good looks at the basket. Six ties, three lead changes in tonight's finale from the Queen City and Charlotte. Already a 14 seed is advanced. Illinois a winner earlier today and 10th seeded Providence knocking out Marquette. And Duke coming out with hard overplay early. He draws a whistle. McLeod gets his second pass. Let's see if Clark Kellogg's prediction was right. He predicted that Duke will pull it out in the second half as they'll distance themselves from the Mary State racers. Clark, I'm sure, had in mind the depth that Duke has and the fact that uh, Trajan Langdon was a non-factor in the first half. And it's very difficult to keep Trajan Langdon under control for 40 minutes. Rainey leans in. Not this time. Carowell clears. Wojo finding Capel off the curl. I maintain that Duke's going to spread the lead in this game. They're going to have to do it in tra with, with transition offense. A pull up. Townsend. The answer from Mark Godfrey would be, hey, my point guard didn't play his best either. He only had four points. He gets the first two of the second half. Caper. A three-point lead. Duke regathers the lead. Rainey operating against Carwell and his bump. Both teams have really worked hard defensively, and I think that we see the positive results. Murray State's faced 32 possessions, and they've stopped Duke 55% of the time. And Duke was even better at 61% of the time they stopped the Murray State Racers. McLeod coming down with that rebound. Langdon off the back iron. McLeod unable to save it. Out of bounds to Murray State. Hamilton on the floor along with Dawson, with Terry Mays, Rainey, and Townsend for Murray State to open the second half. Hamilton, Langdon with a good blackout to clear yet another rebound for a Duke guard. They pull again off the pick. Very subtle pick there by Carwell to help, help spring that shot. And the Blue Devils by four, 41-37. Two minutes deep here in the second half. Townsend and Rojo few flying elbows off the ball. Dawson can't connect. And that'll be a foul on Townsend. No foul, just out of bounds. I beg your pardon. As this defensive play 
begins to unfold. Rojo gets back screened by his own defensive man. Townsend going for the loose ball hit the deck. The whistle blew. They were checking to see if Chad was all right. He was. Mays finally corrals it. Langdon the steal. And the foul. Mays. And Mike Krzyzewski wants the goaltending call. And it's been waved out there. They're not going to give a goaltend. Well, we should mention something. It's a misnomer for those that believe that pinning it up against the backboard is, in fact, an automatic call. There are those that believe that to be the case. That's not true. Absolutely. As long as that ball is on its upward flight and you pin it on the backboard, it's a legal block. Mike Krzyzewski would back to differ. Dawson leaves the game, and Aaron Page, number 20 in gold, coming into the game now for Murray State. And when that ball was pinned on the backboard, it was below the cylinder. 43-37. Murray State got the first deuce of this half. Duke has been on an 8-0 run since. Boy, a ballerina couldn't stretch a quad any more than Wojo did there. Plays with unbelievable intensity. Townsend to Rainey. Mays on the offensive glass, rejected by McLeod. That's Duke's sixth block shot of the game. Mark Godfrey's club unable to pull up and connect. Now driving to the basket and into trouble. Carowell. Godfrey feeling the pinch of this run. It's now a 10-0 spurt. Towns in the timeout. <laughs> See the 10-2 run since the first deuce by Townsend. The Blue Devils now surging to their largest lead of the game. In the Midwest, Tulsa, Clemson, the higher seeds falling there. Temple and Minnesota now winning big, looking to hook up against John Cheney's matchup zone on Sunday, provided they hold on. Temple plays much better out of conference than they do in conference where teams don't have enough time to prepare for them and don't know what to do against that matchup zone. Another push off by Rainey. The Racers have been whistled for that type of foul throughout the course of this game. So very active, but Duke with better rebounding position. Frustrating Mark Godfrey's team. Duke in a most methodical manner is going about the task of separating themselves from the racer. Capel. Jeff Capel in the midst of one of the better comebacks any Duke players had in a senior season. Now giving Duke an 11 point cushion. Capel is capable of scoring 30, and he's capable of scoring six. The lead up to 11. Matt Harris will come in on the next dead ball as Rainey leans in. He's almost better when guarded closely. Well, that's because he operates so efficiently off the dribble. 
Capel again. He has been the pilot light for the fire that burns within the Blue Devils in the second half. 19 for him. Four of four beyond the arc in the half. And who will forget back in December, the Duke student body was booing this young man. In February, they were cheering him. Mays, jump stop and a deuce for DT, as he's known to Terry Mays. 51-41. Off the curl again. This time, the iron unkind, and Mays hauls it down. Townsend to pull up. Wojciechowski will pick up that foul. Third foul on Wojciechowski. Capel does a nice job of getting himself open, utilizing screens, a nice back cut to set his, put his man up as he came off that screen for the easy catch and shoot basket. Capel, a well-deserved rest. He and Langdon sit. Domzowski checks into the game as well. Carowell will get a blow. Chappelle has checked in for the Blue Devils. Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils has a deep bench, and the Racers do not. And Coach K wants to introduce the team as a major factor in this game. Woeful at the line tonight. Townsend now with his first free throw made in five attempts. Duke racing past the racers to a nine point lead. How do you make a great fight? All right, the David Letterman lookalike, Pete Gillen, the head coach of Providence. His team will take on the winner of Duke Murray State. Duke with a nine point lead. Let's take a quick look around the country. Out west in Tucson, Stanford. This game was tied at halftime at 33, but now the Cardinal five point lead and in those white uniforms looking to increase that lead, Clark Kellogg. Brevin Nighttime trying to take control of the game. Sooner struggling shooting the basketball, only three of 11 in the second half. Chris Wings, the two guard for Stanford, having a pretty good game. He's got 12 points and he's knocked down a couple of timely shots in the second half. That's 48-43 Stanford, Oklahoma basketball. That was the fourth foul against Lee. Lee and Brevin Knight, the backcourt duo for the Cardinal. Sooners can get within two right here. So five-point advantage there. Let's move now to the next site, Kansas City, where Minnesota continues to pour it on Southwest Texas, 66 to 30. This is Minnesota with the ball. They got 27 fast break points, Jim. They're doing it with their defense. Just a well-balanced performance from Minnesota. Southwest Texas only 24% shooting. Biggest win by a one seed, Kentucky. Yesterday, winner by 38. This margin right now, 36. And it could get worse. Hold that on Minnesota. So, 36-point advantage. They're in a timeout at uh, Pittsburgh. And Louisville came out, had a big run to take a six-point lead, 36-30. Then what do you know? The Minutemen go on a seven-point run, 37-36. UMass, as they're coming out of a timeout, the under-12 timeout. This is a tough-minded team. They really got it turned around after a tough, tough start early on. Key guys injured, a tough schedule. Now they're playing with great confidence. Larry Kettner, freshman inside. Terry Mays off the miss by Hamilton at 51 44. Mary State continues to hang around. Tied at 35 at halftime. Duke went on a 10 2 spurt, and Jeff Capel took over from beyond the arc, and they surged to a seven point cushion against the 15th seeded racers from Murray State. 
off the ball, a foul spotted. Rainey hitting the deck. McLeod got a piece of him, that's his third. Capel and Langdon now re-enter. Bryce, Wojciechowski, and Domzowski leave. Mike Chappelle also on the floor as Mike Krzyzewski continues his liberal usage of bench strength against a thinner Murray State team. Each time when it appears Duke is about to separate themselves from Murray State, Murray State comes back with a big basket, a big rebound, or an impressive defensive stop. Well, that time, Chappelle got a piece of one driving to the basket, and Mays loses his dribble. Darren Dawson will come into the game now for Murray State. Because of the intense defensive pressure on the ball, Duke has forced Murray State to operate offensively strictly off the dribble. Langdon now taking Mays through baseline picks. Chappelle. A three-pointer for the freshman from Southfield, Michigan. If we take a look at Murray State this time on offense, you'll notice that very seldom do they screen for each other. Rainey can't connect. He really wanted a foul, as did Mike Dockery. He didn't get it. Well, you to the crowd. Mays. Mark Dockery does not like that. No time for that much urgency in your offense. Townsend slaps it away. Townsend. Bounds, it'll be controlled to do. Beginning to see a little panic in the eyes of the racers. Mike Krzyzewski's deeper trio making it happen. Uptown and downtown in Charlotte. Cozy, huh? What? Whoa. Bedroom? No way. Secure? Saying the investigation is ongoing, Customs had no effect. Had to get the quick release off and hit him. Shoulder that really got racked up during that Missouri game of the Big 12 tournament. He's been taking hot and cold treatments all through. It's been a very physical game. You see underneath the boards. Bruce oh. Flint calling the play off the UMass bench. Good switch out that time by Sims. Weeks and Travieso, the two-man game. Travieso pulls up, back wins that one. Weeks, an offensive rebound, and banks home the turnaround. Tyrone has been terrific on the board, shooting the jump shot that time a little fadeaway. 6'7", senior from Philadelphia, really has answered the bell here tonight. We are tied at 42. Weeks is 6 of 10 from the floor. Good position down low. The high post offense once again says the only full-size car to earn a Consumer's Digest Best Buy Award an unprecedented seven years in a row. To celebrate, let's make it better. For a limited time, get an additional $1,000 cash savings on 88 by Oldsmobile. A Best Buy made better. See your local Oldsmobile retailer today. Sid and Nat's Deli is naming a sandwich after me. This is one hero that's hard. Taken by Sanders. You know something, Mike, you two ball clubs that you think really explosive offensively, neither one pushing the tempo because there's nothing there. ...continues on CBS Sports. First round coverage from Charlotte, North Carolina. Our tournament summary, Austin Crozier of Providence bypassing Billy Donovan's record of 35 points in an NCAA tournament game, most ever by a Friar. Higher seeds, 21-7 and seven in the tournament, but only 7-5 and five today. Kiwan Garris had a huge day in Illinois' win over Southern Cal. 27 points, 11 to 6. And George Rattler and Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. It has been an enjoyable afternoon and evening here in the Queen City. And the Duke guards have really picked up the pace here in the second half. 
Capel trying to go behind his back that time with that pass. Ill-advised, and Murray State will get it back. And as the Duke guards have picked up the pace in the second half, the Murray State guards were 8 for 18 in the first half. In the second half, they've gone 7 for 28. Townsend hit that first basket to make it 37-35. But Duke hasn't looked back since. This is a tired Murray State basketball team. They have no legs left. McLeod getting the offensive board, giving Duke another opportunity. And it really won't be long now when, when Krzyzewski can begin to use clock off offensive rebounds. Dawson comes away with that one. Townsend demands. Those perimeter jumpers not falling, leading Murray State to drive to the hole, and that's where the blocks and deflections come, courtesy of that interior defense for Duke. Harrowell. Well, going the other way, Mike Krzyzewski disagreeing. State will get it back. You see the substitution pattern for Duke and Coach K well aware that he has the depth making a difference in this game. Carrowell got that foul. Murray State gets it back and the shooting percentage really drifting now for the racers and as we mentioned earlier George panic in the eyes beginning to set in awfully early in the second half. The reason for the poor shooting percentage for Murray State evolves around poor shot selection. They, they have shown a noticeable lack of patience on offense. They won't let, allow the offense to come to them. They don't screen. And this is one of the few possessions where they've had, they've even reversed the ball. They tend to operate far too much off the dribble. Rainey, similar shot to the one he hit prior to halftime that tied the game at 35. And he's 8 of 23 from the floor. Wojo, Mays clears. Outlook to Rainey. Oh, a 360 reversal. Rainey giving us another highlight. His ninth field goal of the game. And if you get style points in an Olympic year, he should have gotten more than a deuce. Murray State can get back into this game. They're playing good pressure defense. Their problem is at the offensive end and evolves around poor shot selection. McLeod getting his man airborne. Hamilton fouls. A, a nice pass ahead and we'll see the creativity of Rainey in the open court as he used a little spin move to free himself by the overplay by Wojo for the nice basket as he used the rim to protect the basketball from, from a potential block shot. Barry High School, Memphis, Tennessee, producing its fair share of quality talent. Rainey, one of those. <laughs> Good buddy of mine coaches down there at Fairly High School, Coach Ford. Been an institution for some time. McLeod looking for his sixth free throw and seven tries here. Loose ball again. Duke a little quicker to the ball, particularly in the second half. And Rojo with a little Marcus Haynes out, leaving it for McLeod. Rojo with another pick pocket. That's. Grand larceny he just committed. Finally taken down by Townsend of Murray State. Wojo spends more time on the floor than Johnson's wax. Hamilton a put back. Seven for Arnell Hamilton. 4A player of the year from Alabama some years ago before heading to junior college in Pensacola, Florida. 57-50. Nice cut. Capo from the crowd. 21 for him. 59, 50 under eight remaining in our game. Room, 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 room. 
Murray State giving no indication that there will be any letdown in their emotion. Mark Godfrey has the offense under control now. They have better spacing. They're moving the ball. That's the fifth pass. And once again, an easy basket. Nine in the game for Hamilton. Considered a complimentary player. Doing his best to aid the three stars for Murray State. And Coach K needs and gets a 20. And you... The king of thievery, though, for Duke has been Wojciechowski. And here he goes for the once on the floor. And a ball, it goes down for the second time, and he's going to get up, and then he goes down again. <laughs> Leading the league in floor burns, and one of the reasons Mike Krzyzewski adores him, as he has all of the guards, you see some of them in that huddle. Quinn Snyder, Tommy Amaker, all part of the tradition of Mike Krzyzewski's tremendous run. Four-time national coach of the year. Hard to believe in his tenure at Duke, Coach K only getting his fourth ACC coach of the year crown the other day. Capel. Chappelle. Nice pass. 61-52. Chappelle has eight. Off the ball, foul spotted, Price picking up his third, trying to check Rainey. Tough assignment. He's got his hands all over him. Face guarding and fronting, leading to a foul. I'm a little surprised to see Ricky Price playing defense with his hands because certainly Mike Krzyzewski is a large advocate of playing defense with your feet. Carowell and Rashawn McLeod back on the floor with Wojciechowski. Murray State's a lot more productive in their half-court offense on the last four possessions, principally because they've kept the ball off the floor and they've had better player movement and better ball movement, particularly ball reversal. An amazing feat when you consider they lost four starters from last year's team. Losing in the OVC tournament. Transfers and freshmen getting it done for Mark Godfrey. A tradition unlike any other. Tonight's game would be won along the perimeter by either team, and you see the numbers for Mays, Rainey, and Townsend, the collective 30% from the floor, though combining for just under 70% of their scoring. Duke has picked it up with the help of Capel's run in the early moments of the second half, but still is the difference in this game, Duke leading by seven. But as you watch the game, George, you feel that the Blue Devils should be up by a far larger margin. Capel rejected. Good work by Murray State in the low post. Townsend, stop and go. And an offensive foul. Player control against Chad, his third. An opportunity missed for Mark Gottfried's team. And it was the result of over-penetration. If he had stopped at the top of the circle, he would have caused the defense to have to make a difficult decision. They've lost such confidence in their perimeter game, they believe they have to drive a little closer to the basket, don't they? Yes, but they're shooting 31%. McLeod can't hit. Duke getting the second and third chances. Carowell finally gets out. Mike Krzyzewski applauds the effort underneath. Mary State has six players sitting out this year, four of which I've been told would be starters immediately, and two of them are potential all-conference players. So the future for Razor basketball looks real good. At the end of their bench, 
Mike Turner, freshman from Good Pasture High School in Nashville, Tennessee, the brother of Jeff Turner, who played at Vanderbilt and, of course, a professional career. Outstanding young talent, 6'7". One of those that Godfrey will get next year. McLeod, long rebound again, claimed by Duke. It's stripped away by Rainey. Murray State just does not have any energy left defensively. They're all standing in the erect position. Rainey gets the traveling violation. These turnovers have a little to do with that fatigue that you're mentioning. But Mark Gottfried's club, on effort alone, hanging in. Only down seven with 5.44 to play. Well, as you watch them return to defense, they're walking back on defense. They have their hands on their hips. They're standing up straight. They lack communication in the defense. Well, playing against Duke in the way they overplay. You get in your face. That'll take a little steam out of you, won't it? It certainly will, because they've had to work so hard at both ends of the floor to remain competitive in this game. Capo extends the lead to 10. Jeff having a marvelous second half, 24 points on the night. And his last four baskets have come off of a baseline screen, freeing him coming right to left for the open jump shot. Rainey trying to do it on his own. Finds Harris. Mays pulling up. But Terry Mays has 13. He hit his first two baskets tonight and it appeared that he was on his way to a very productive evening. And then he hit the skids offensively. If you didn't look at the scoreboard, you'd think Duke was up 20 now. Oh, yeah. But Murray State just continues to hang around. Harris down low, guilty of the push. This third. One chance. One chance at the dance to make a lot of noise against a celebrated program that's made a living in the last decade. Though Duke's image certainly a little different coming into this year's NCAA tournament. Knocked out in the first round last year, you'll recall. A losing record the, the season prior when Mike Krzyzewski had to leave the sidelines. Taking on a bit, a bit more of an underdog role. And in fact, the only time that they were a number one seed and won the title was 92. And they needed a miracle that year, courtesy Christian Leitner to defend their national championship. 91 to 92. Well, they're going to be heading back into the national championship pitcher. They signed some outstanding high school talent. Chris Burgess out of Irvine, California. Eldon Brand out of Peekskill, New York. And Shane Battier, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, those three youngsters rank among the top ten high school seniors in the country. In fact, that recruiting class has caused Blue Devil fans' expectations to run out of control. Mays has 15 after that bucket. Closest it's been since 43-37, two and a half minutes deep in the second half. Well, we have a six-point game on our hands. Mays comes away with it. And we might be looking at a three- or four-point game. Townsend. Hamilton can't corral it. By the way, for those of you watching us and wondering what happened to number 14, apparently Arnell Hamilton had some blood on his jersey, forced to change that jersey, and is now wearing number 23 in gold rather than 14. He's checking Carowell for Duke. On the baseline. So when you're Murray State and you lose a jersey, you've got to go to someone else's. <laughs> That's the difference maybe in a 15th seed and a second seed. Harris touched it last. It will belong to Duke. The bumps and bruises of playing Duke 
Murray State finding out tonight. Dakota and Temple will match up on Sunday. By the way, when Harris lost that ball out of bounds, just prior to the clock going to zero, a shot clock violation occurred, so Murray State a break, now with possession of the ball out of the timeout. Nice leaping leaner by Mays. It's suddenly a four-point game. 17 for him. We're coming down to the wire. And yet another bump and grind that sends a racer to the floor. And it is to Terry Mays. There's no quit in this Murray State racer team. Now, it's easy to see why Mark Gottfried is getting so much attention from other schools across this country. His teams play so hard, even here when you feel like oh, he's getting away. And he ran right into his own man. Own man. Yeah, and uh, you'll recall that Arnell Hamilton was forced to leave the game because uh, he was bleeding, Hamilton bleeding. He had to change his jersey now. Hamilton, who already changed jerseys once, may have to do it twice. So he's already won, worn 14 and 23. We'll see what jersey number he dons again, but the greater concern now is for the Terry Mays. And this is an, not the time that you want to lose Terry Mays. Just a magnificent move, penetrating to the glass and then running head on into Hamilton. You see he knows the blood is there and now it's really working its way free. Finally hits the deck. And he could use Mike Tyson's cut man. Mm. Oh, that looks bad. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco would get a real workout if he were in the corner right now. And what was happening with that machine was they were stapling in some stitches and to close that wound. Not a game for the faint of heart. As you look at our game summary, you look at the numbers and you think, well, maybe an ugly game, but in truth, a fast-paced game, chock full of deflections, block shots, and athletic plays. It's been a game of contradictions. In the second half, during the first nine minutes, Duke went seven for 12 from the field. This last six minutes, three for 17. We'll be right back. Is assembled at Zuffenhausen, is assembled at Zuffenhausen, Germany. Much the same way fighters were assembled. In the midst of a four-point game, to Terry Mays is back, stitched up and ready to go. And in the case of Arnell Hamilton, once wearing 23 because of blood, now wearing 25 because of blood. He was once Floyd. He's now Cunningham. <laughs> He's a candidate for the witness protection program. 64 to 60. Murray State has a full timeout and a 20. More contact. Mays just can't stay away from him. That's his third. But what heart this team has shown, embodied in Mays, Arnell Hamilton, and with the long stoppage of play, one would think, George, advantage Murray State because, uh, the fatigue factor is something that we've documented through the course of tonight's game. A chance to perhaps be refreshed for the stretch run here. Tim, Murray State wouldn't know quit if it walked up and handed him a business card. All right. 66 60. Still a two possession game. Mark Gottfried's miracle men from the OVC trying to pull off yet an unthinkable upset in round one of the road to the final four. Turnover. Duke's perimeter defense doing it again. For the most part, Mark Gottfried's club 
handling a lot of the pressure, only 10 turnovers, but Duke getting them at opportune times like that. Duke's going to go into a mini delay game to milk the clock. They'll take it down to 10 seconds, and then they'll probably run Jeff Capel off a baseline screen. Oh, cross Langdon and Trajan along the baseline, see who they can free for the open jumper. Here comes Capel. Here comes Langdon. Crossing them off the baseline. McLeod. Carroll. Loose ball collected by Page. Still a two-possession game. Townsend trying to create. A leaner. Not there. Now you begin to wonder if they begin to foul. Apparently not. They're going to play straight up defense at least one more time, allowing Duke to whittle down the 35 second shot clock. This sequence could be your ball game. Well, if they get a stop here and go down and hit a three, then they still have a realistic opportunity. They're blending, handled the contact, and knocked it down. Mark Godfrey can't believe it was a no call. He felt the player control foul was in place. As they have all night long for UMass. Terrific defensive ballgame. Louisville Cardinals, a team that struggled down the stretch this year, but a nice time to turn it around. And look at that advantage at the free throw line. 17 of 20 here in the second half. A 14-point bulge. Well, Mike, we thought Louisville came out of the locker room at halftime. More explosive defensively, did some nice things. They're patient offensively. And again, when you shoot 20, 17 to 20 from the foul line, they're going to have a pretty good night. Travieso, they will not cover the inbounds pass. He's able to get it into Padilla. I mean, men need points in a hurry. Padilla, Travieso tees up a three, buries it. Timeout, oh, what, what a shot by Travieso. For Travieso, four-point game. I think there's a lot of hoops still to be played in Pittsburgh. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Vincent Rainey, 20 points and eight rebounds. Jeff Capel hitting five of seven, five of eight from beyond the arc in the second half, leading Duke to its lead, a lead that would never evaporate. Arnell Hamilton in his third jersey collecting his 11th point. Creating all kinds of box score dilemmas in the second half of this game, and a quick foul given up by to Terry Mays. His uh, forehead uh, almost wrapped in gauze and ace bandage. Did new drama? Can knowing the foot of it? The racer's medical staff did a quick and efficient job of getting him back into the game. He wasn't out of the game 60 seconds. Uh, making any pit crew proud. Strong effort by this team, and we should note Mark Gottfried, one of many names being bantered about in Knoxville, Tennessee, for the recently vacant. Each side with a full timeout. Nate Johnson, the freshman, will send it in. Wheat back in, trying to get the basketball. And the basketball game. But I certainly don't think that Mark has done anything that would lessen Doug Dickey's interest in him. Mac McCarthy also has shown interest in the job. Dave Odom's name now being mentioned as uh, his Demon Deacons roll on in this NCAA tournament. Duke will advance to play Providence. A tremendous full court game to be sure there. Tennessee Chattanooga matches up very well against the Illini on Sunday. I think we have two exciting basketball games coming up on Sunday. Outstanding coaches, outstanding teams. All four of these teams are very good defensive teams. We'll now get a breather, watch a little hoops tomorrow. And get ready to go on Sunday. Raining. Raining down yet another three before this one's done. 23 for him in the quick timeout with 9.8 remaining, down by four. This is the kind of game, George, that a, a young program with a second-year coach can really build from 
next year. Well, particularly when you have six talented with 22 seconds on the clock. And if B.J. Flynn, an 81% free throw shooter, can just make one. All right, we're going to break in for a moment here and get you to the final seconds of UMass Louisville. The Cardinals with a six-point lead, 22 seconds to go. Let's listen in with Mike Gorman and John Sumble. Both ball clubs, outstanding years. That pushes it up to a seven-point game at 64-57. Icing on the cake. First two points for B.J. Flynn. Padilla. No, 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 no. Flynn again the rebound. Flynn waiting to get fouled. Dantzler with six seconds. Nice move with the dribble and a 10-second violation. 10-second count. There's a little coaching from Denny Crum. Said, hey, please pass the ball. Alvin Sims is standing on the other end. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game, Tyrone Weeks from UMass, 16 and 11. The numbers for Weeks and Nate Johnson. What a great game for the freshman. 10 of 10 at the line, 21 overall. Townsend trying to push. One more time. A three-pointer with three seconds left. Stranger things have happened. Well, that's what I said to you. If he misses that second one and he hits it, now it's a one-point differential. Duke trying to avoid the unthinkable with three ticks left. What we're probably going to end up with, Tim, here is a real victory for Duke and a moral victory for Murray State. You think back to a key point in this game, George, I think it may have been when Langdon picked up the two early fouls and Murray State's offense bogged down, never really built a lead. They had a four-point lead at one time, but that was a stage in the game where their triple trouble backcourt of Mays and Rainey and Townsend could have seized some offensive control. When they didn't, it allowed Langdon and Capel to be a factor late in the first half and then early in the second. If you're Murray State, there's three seconds left on the clock and you're down two. You absolutely must foul before the ball comes in bounds and take a chance that Duke will not score. Or the other possibility is to go for the steal. You can try to go for the steal on the inbounds play. If you're going to foul right away before the ball comes in bounds, I would go to the official and I would tell him that we're going to foul number so-and-so. Let the officials know in advance. Plant that in their mind. Now, the other strategy is, if you feel you're a strong enough defensive team, then try to go for the steal. Put a tall player on the ball to block visibility and go for the steal. Which guy do you foul? Look at those numbers. All of them very tough at the line, though they have missed late in this game. At this stage, you just have to foul. Yes, he, he, he really can't be picky with three seconds remaining. Murray State, a 15 seed challenging second seeded Duke in their home state down the road in Charlotte. Looking at the team Duke has on the floor, I would select to foul Ricky Price. McLeod missed one earlier. Looks like they're going for the steal. They're going to switch and he uh, crosses the ball. Wojciechowski comes up with it. Page picks up the foul. 2.3 remaining. But even now, still some life. The man on the baseline moved on this possession, and he could move because it was after a made basket. Intelligent inbound play. Most players in a situation like that who are inbound in the ball remain in a 
stationary position. Most players don't have that coach to remind them. I've seen too many teams throw away the inbounds pass when they had the ability to run the baseline and did not do it. <laughs> Ojahowski with the benefit of a kind iron. This one would make it a two possession game and end it. And they'll take McLeod off the line. The young man that's in perspective, the ability to see the big picture, enjoying himself. One last crack. To the last bell, Murray State would not be short. Their effort tall, their last shot too long. And Duke survives as a number two seed and will see another day against Providence in our double hitter that will also include Tennessee Chattanooga, a 14 seed, moving into the next round against six seeded Illinois. For George Raveling, Tim Brando, so long for our entire crew. After this break, back to New York and Jim Nance. Two